Hello there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. In today's video, we're going to begin preparing ourselves for a fairly ambitious painting. And this canvas that we have here is a 36 by 48 inch canvas. That is 91.4 centimeters by 121.9 centimeters. And the first thing we wanna do is tone this thing with oil paint. So what we have here is odorless mineral spirits. Uh, just raw umber, pretty cheap, yet still artist grade. This is Plaza brand artist oils, raw umber. And some, some medium. So this is a liquid original. Not gonna use too much medium, however. So now what we have here is our odorless mineral spirits and our medium. So the next thing we wanna do is combine a little bit of our paint with the medium, but not too much, and I'll show you. So there's a nice and generous amount of raw umber. We're gonna just take a little bit of this medium. I'm telling you, not that much. I probably put a little too much there, but that's all right. So with the palette knife, I'm not gonna give you ratios for how much uh, medium to use. You're just gonna, you're gonna have to eyeball it really. You just wanna get a consistency that is um, not too fluid. You want it to be somewhat in between uh, opaque, fairly opaque and fluid. And we're gonna use the mineral spirits uh, to thin out the paint a little bit to make it easier to apply. The only reason I'm adding a little bit of liquid, notice very tiny bit of liquid to quite a bit of raw umber is just so that uh, this painting or this layer, uh, the, the tone that we're gonna put on the canvas dries in about a week or a couple days. So that's about good. And now you want a fairly large brush for this, and this just happens to be the largest brush, brush I have. It is a size 10 Princeton Catalyst poly tip bristle. So I'm just going to add a little bit of mineral spirits. Don't want too much. So I'm going to hold the palette while ap applying the mineral spirits. So this is a good consistency, starting to drip on the palette. Just a very, a kind of a thin mixture, yet still a little bit opaque. Now, let's go ahead and just very lightly now, apply the tone. Now, depending on how dark you want the tone to be, um, well, if you want it to be less dark, then, I mean, obviously use a less dark color. Uh, but my tactic on this is to basically thin out the paint quite a bit, apply a very even distribution of paint. And you can see here on this little corner, the more kind of, the more times I pass the brush over each area, the more it kind of sinks into the uh, cotton canvas. And if you wanna know exactly what canvas I'm using, um, I'm gonna go ahead and link, I'm gonna type it up in the description box below so you can check that out. But I mean, to be honest, it's just your regular everyday normal cotton canvas. It's just a fairly large cotton canvas. And right about here, Right about there, you can see the value that I'm after. And I'm not using too much medium. And the odorless mineral spirits will kind of evaporate into the air, leaving a very nice consistency, a very nice ground to continue to work. You know, these days I tend to favor kind of the Baroque or the uh, Caravaggistis, I guess. I think that's what they were called. Currently, my favorite painter is Caravaggio. 
currently. That always changes. It depends on what day of the week it is, to be honest. I really hope that that sound from the brush isn't too uh, bad. Whoops. Well, I hope that it doesn't sound too bad. Which leaves me with an interesting question. Question of the day, everyone. What is your favorite time period in the history of art? Your favorite time period and your favorite artist? I guess that's two questions, huh? But anyway, question of the day. What's your favorite artist slash time period? And I'm just letting the brush strokes go in any which way, any way they feel like going. I mean, th to be honest, this is a lot of fun. Um, tell you what, if you ever have, if you're ever having a bad day in the studio or something, or somebody says something about your artwork uh, that's less than appealing, get yourself some canvases and tone them. You can literally just beat them up. Just as Bob Ross would say, just beat the devil out of it. I mean, this canvas alone already has so much kind of creative energy. This is just so much fun. I'm having so much fun with this. It's not even funny. This is just too much fun. So now that we've toned the canvas and we're going to put this aside, the next thing to do to get prepared for uh, this large painting is to do some compositional studies. To get ready for a compositional study, what you're going to want to do is get a rectangle that is of the same proportion of the canvas that you have. So the original canvas was 36 by 48 inches. Don't worry about the fact that they're inches, just take the number 36 and the number 48. So the original rectangle was 36 by the shorter side, 48 by the longer side. So divide both sides by the same number. That's it. Divide both sides by the same number. As long as they divide evenly, you should be able to get a rectangle. So what I did was I divided 36 by 6, which gives me 6. So this length is 6. I took 48 divided by 6, which gave me 8. So this is a 6 by 8 inch rectangle, and it's of the same proportion as the larger canvas. So here is an image of our model, Steve. So the nice thing about this project that we're starting is that we're actually going to get to work from life and from photo reference at the same time. So Steve is posing for my Tuesday morning portrait group that I run in Howard County, Maryland. So last Tuesday, I did a charcoal study, a charcoal sketch of him. So here's the, here's an image of the charcoal sketch that I made with my art group on Tuesday. And um, I'm gonna do the best that I can to bring my camera and set it up properly so that we can have some decent footage of when I'm actually working from life. So that might be voice voiced over uh, just because talking while other artists are working probably isn't fair to the other artists. But anyway, that's going to be a really big advantage to be able to work from life as well as photo reference. And another thing I should note is that the pose is a six week pose. So last week was the first week, so there are five weeks left. So this is going to be a painting that is going to be developed over uh, a five week period. And don't worry, it's not, each day of the week is not going to be about this painting because I know that that would bore everyone. So I'm gonna do an Alla Prima portrait here and there or some Alla Prima still life here and there in the meantime. All right, so what we have here is the, the rectangle that we drew out and a uh, plastic, a sheet of plastic with uh, a gray tone underneath that we will use for the palette just so you'll be able to see uh, how I mix the paint. So I'm actually going to lightly tone 
this surface with the raw umber. I think that's about good. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of titanium white. So this, this part of the study is going to be done in monochrome. So we're just going to take a little bit of titanium white and the raw umber that we had before. Now I took the, the little bit of raw umber that wasn't uh, diluted with the mineral spirit. So hopefully it doesn't drip off the side. And before we get started on that, let's make sure to clean off the palette. In case anyone's curious about how you clean a wooden painter's palette, that's how you do it. Just a little bit of scraping with the palette knife. Odorless mineral spirits, and that's it. So I'm just going to take a, a size one round brush, put a little bit of raw umber. One thing to note about this pose is that next week uh, we're going to put some still life objects onto this table. So this little table that we're drawing here, uh, we're gonna put like a little globe. We're gonna change out that book and we're also going to give um, some binoculars on the table. So there's gonna be quite a bit of interesting still life involved with the painting. So uh, while we're putting in this little basic shape for where we think the head is going to fit, uh, well, let's also talk about the narrative of the painting. So this is going to be my first narrative painting. So um, the narrative is going to be something something along the lines of an explorer, like a geographer. Think about Vermeer's geographer or um, just a regular, I guess not regular, but an explorer. So there's going to be a little globe over here. So I'm imagining I would put kind of another element in the composition somewhere about here. So if this is the globe it would fit, I don't know, right about there. And so that's why I'm using this wipeout technique. I'll show you why actually. So I'm able to just wipe out any area that I don't like. And again, this is a compositional study. Um, so really what the compositional study is about is just kind of getting acclimated to the, the big shapes. So for instance, the placement of the model can be as simple as just a simple little rectangle. I don't know, a little rectangle for his head, a little shape there for his beard. Now, if you want a more realistic study, I'm planning on doing a little portrait study of him as well. So yeah, there's gonna be quite a bit of stuff involved in the production of this painting. And I'm definitely trying to move towards that direction. I'm really trying to bring you closer to the experience of what it's really like um, in the studio. Now, of course, I know that it's gonna, like I said earlier, it's gonna probably get a little bit boring if, I, um, if I'm doing, if I'm working on the same thing five weeks straight. So yeah, I'm gonna put in some, I'm gonna film some still life painting or some uh, a la prima portrait sketches like I used to and things like that just for fun just to not get too uh, just to not get bored with the same painting so what we have here is just a basic little outside shape and I'm already making the decision to put his head somewhere in a th three quarter so this is about a three quarter position the next thing we're going to do uh, since this is a wipeout drawing, we're going to subtract a little bit with the paper towel just to put in a little element of light in the composition. And I know that we're going to change out the book next week. So the shape of that book will change. I mean, this is actually a magazine. We d I didn't really have any, any books to give them uh, to hold that day. Um, so just a little smear like that to get an idea of 
where a book would be. So the book is going to be here. And another exciting thing about this is that um, I get to involve all of you in the development of this painting. So uh, you can always go ahead and request a still life object. So I'm going to tell you which still life we already have in mind. So we have a uh, so we have a, a globe. I'm going to go ahead and kind of make up a globe. The globe would be somewhere, I don't know, around here. Just to add another element in the composition, a little taller element in the composition. So I'm guessing uh, the globe will be about there. Um, one of my friends is going to bring in the globe uh, next Tuesday. So we'll get to see what the globe will actually look like. But I'm guessing the globe will be a sphere because because the uh, the earth is round and stuff. So I'm guessing it's going to be a sphere. Not sure of the dimension. So I want it to be a little bit lower than his head. I hope that the globe that they bring isn't that, isn't huge. But I don't know, just something that's a little bit taller. Adds a taller element to the composition. Now let's go ahead and put in a little outside shape for the book. Now I don't really need, to be honest, I don't really need the photo reference that much for this stage. Um, it's really about placing these shapes onto this, this rectangle and get an idea of where everything is going to fit. And then when, when this dries, we can even use this for a value study. And we'll be able to move things around in a very free manner. And this is so that we're even more informed when we get into the larger painting. Let's give him his, his beard. Honestly, Steve is one of my favorite models to work with. You may recognize him from some of my older uh, portrait painting tutorials. I painted him once or twice. I think I did a drawing demonstration of him. A little bit of light there. And again, we really want to keep this simple. So let's subtract a little bit of light there. A little bit of light here for his shoulder. Let's get an idea of the outside shape. And there's going to be a little sphere for the globe and his head is going to be there. Now I don't know what the sphere is going to look like, but we can guess it's going to be round and it's going to fit like that. And there are going to be some binoculars in this. So a little spot here, a little spot there. And again, this isn't really intended to be a, a realist painting. This is just to get an idea of composition. So a little shape there for, I don't know, just a little smudge for where the uh, binoculars would be. His hand is down there. And we're definitely, I'm definitely going to do some studies uh, for the hands. I'll definitely, since I'll be able to see him on Tuesday, I'll get some, uh, I'll take some better photographs for his hands and all of that. Maybe one of these days we'll do a, a hand study. So I'll just fill in this little dark shape here. And now I'm going to get the titanium white. I'm going to add a little bit of liquid to it. So with just the titanium white, I want to put in some light shapes for the book. And again, I don't know what the book is going to look like. So a little bit of light there for that. And uh, not as light, but a little bit of light for the beard. Now I'm not going to go and put in any like features or anything, anything like that for this compositional study. It's not even, 
about value, even though we're putting in value, it's not intended to be a value study. Once we get some more information on what still life objects we're going to put in, then we'll really get into the value. But for now, just putting in a little, little bit of titanium white in the areas that are going to be illuminated. So for instance, the binoculars, I might want to put a little bit of light for where they would be. And then the table. So we're going to have a little bit of light on the table. Now the table is a kind of a dark red color there, but it can also change. Again, this is going to be a long-term project. So if you have any ideas for what color you want the table to be, you can go ahead and let me know. And of course, my, um, my friends in the painting group have to approve as well. And if, if you ever want to paint with me, it's uh, Howard County Arts Council. I'll leave a link in the description box down below to that school. I also teach a uh, Monday night portrait class there too. A little bit of light there. And again, I'm not trying to make a perfect photographic rendition of anything. I'm just getting an idea of where I want shapes to exist. I might do several of these studies until I figure out how I want the portrait to fit on this rectangle. So at a distance you can really get an idea and at that angle that you're into you can really get an idea of uh, what the big picture is going to look like and who knows I might change some things here and there um, but definitely I think I want to place uh, the the model somewhere kind of three-quarter in the composition and use a little bit of chiaroscuro still don't know how to pronounce that chiaroscuro meaning a strong differentiation between uh, light and dark so I really hope that this video helps you out I wish you the best in all of your artwork and I'll be back again tomorrow